between you, you, and and the the you and the transfer call before coming to take action? Well, the issue about the uh, no-go zone enforcement is something that, uh, you know, we have, uh, everyone has different leadership style, okay? So we, we understand that uh, some of the uh, uh, bicycle and tricycle uh, operators are tax here. So we, we have still a meeting with the, uh, the New York Federation that started back in August. And uh, we told them that due to our own uh, statistics, after the statistics, we have seen an uh, increase in the uh, in the accident uh, as a result of the reckless behavior of some of those uh, motorcycles there. So based on our uh, statistics, uh, we told them that we're going back to Santa Cruz Andy, Andy, where uh, there will be a demarcation where they are allowed to move uh, freely. So we're restricting them to the freedom rule in the community and uh, they appeal. So we gave them something, I mean, we'll be very flexible with them. So we told them that okay, we will actually look at the whole entire process and uh, we even ask them to make their own recommendations so they even have an input in the, the logo zone or the location that we came up with. Okay, so for claim to be part of the leadership, they are saying that you met with some people outside the leadership instead of the real leadership. Did well, the police well, meet with people in the leadership to tell them about the action they are about to take? Well, I don't understand uh, what they are talking about because the issue is that uh, they have met over, uh, over 10 plus uh, UN and federation. And uh, in addition to that, for the past two weeks, we have been awareness. I have been to uh, almost, almost six radio stations telling that we are going to carry enforcement. And one thing I wanted to understand, when it has to do with public safety, the Labour National Police, we have a full responsibility to report the law, okay? So this year, it has to do with public safety. So we are using that measure to actually ensure that the certain area that is actually allowed to actually move freely, the certain area is not. So to be specific here, the issue from uh, Broadway to uh, Club Beer Factory, right? They can make that left, go use the freedom road to come to uh, Carwell, uh, Looking Town, and come to Somalia Drive, okay? They cannot come to uh, Dwalab, uh, Perfo, Looking Town, and also uh, the New Bridge. So those, the three types of bridge, the tricycle, right? They allow to come to Broadway and come to all the way to uh, uh, Waterside. So those who come from Pinsville, I'll be specific for red light. The stopping point is right at uh, PSW Junction. You turn around and use the ABT road and go back. Mm. Now, Honorable Sako, welcome to KMTV. Uh, my name is Aisha Diva. Uh, this morning, while coming along the Boulevard route, we saw police at various checkpoints, you know, restricting motorbikes. So we want to be specific as to what are the categories of bikes that are to apply the new go zone. So those commercial bikes are now they use uh, to go above, uh, beyond the no go zone. So we have other uh, non-governmental institutions, businesses, and uh, also uh, government institutions that also also have operator of those bikes. So we are saying to you that uh, you come to the Labour National Police Headquarters. Uh, we have a team here that is responsible to issue passes to those uh, individuals that request to uh, actually move beyond the no go zone. But be careful now, there's a cash rate, there's a requirement. When you come here, in order for you to get that passes, you have to make sure you have registration, a license, and insurance, and also have a helmet. And secondly, you have to have show legal documentation that the bag is owned by businesses, and also that uh, you have been registered, insured. So when there's any accident, your insurance company will cover the cost of the damage done to all our uh, property. My question is, how does motorcycle impair people's movement especially in central Monrovia that you are bringing this restriction at this crucial point in time oh, I, I, don't, I don't understand when you say crucial point because the issue is that there's a political capital first thing okay this actually post the, uh, the seat of the president who have the legislature here the judiciary and you, 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 I think you're waiting to that it's some look as I say I'm very clear here we have to do with public safety we have honor obligation in making sure our people are, are protected when the issue of accident is on the increase, we are also on an obligation to make sure we put into place a strategy that will continue the situation. And the best strategy now is to make sure that the motorcycles that are restricted. Now, let me take you back. Uh, previously, prior to the election, uh, we saw motorcyclists burning vehicles all around the country. And the Liberal National Police, at that point, did not bring in these restrictions. So, uh, one may say, why is it now? Well, the issue is that, as I said, we started the engagement since August, okay? So before the election, we even concluded that we're going to start the enforcement. But what happened is that we noticed that in past election, okay, the uh, candidates for political parties, independent candidates, have been using the motorcycles then for campaign purposes to move their, you know what I mean, their supporters, you know what I mean? So we decided 
to relax the enforcement. Then after the election and the uh, decision, we'll actually start enforcement come 2020, come 2020, uh, 2021. Okay, where, so where, where the there, okay, it's like 25 there, the second is 50. After the second, what next? The second is that we're going to uh, uh, keep your bag here for, for three months then, uh, uh, and turn it over to the, the traffic code for, uh, for Ocean. They are saying that uh, the issue of proper communication uh, were not in the making as to they being restricted into certain zones. So as I said, we have been having an engagement for August. And even after August, after the election, we also have meetings, two different meetings with the Sacred uh, Union and Federation. And also, I myself, along with my public safety, chief of public safety, we went on the radio, went to uh, over six radio stations, and also disseminated the information to the public, and, e and also to the motorcycles. Then, look, there will always be one. There will always be people who will be in violation. And let me say this, let me make myself very clear. When the issue of crime and accidents on the increase, police have to crack down to contain the situation. And we are doing the best we can when it has to do with public safety to contain the issue of accident and crime within the, in, in the country. And also, there's a 10 p.m. Uh, 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 restriction to that. They are only allowed to operate from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. So after 10 p.m., where we have our, check, our checkpoint within the Zuzan Depot, we will have those bags uh, also arrested as well. Finally, finally from my end, what's the penalty? Penalty for what? For who be violators? Well, the first violator, uh, violation is a $25 fine. You have to come with a registration, license, and insurance. The second is $50. You got to come with your registration, in, in, insurance, and license, and also have a helmet. Then the third, we will seize your bike and we'll tell you what the traffic code for you. Where's that money being paid? The money being we'll give you a ticket, you pay in the government or uh, cover. We are not, LMP is not in charge of that. We will give you a ticket, you pay, you bring the flight receipt, then we sign up on it, we list it back to you. The duration. The, those are the bags that have been arrested. The duration, the duration. The duration, throughout the year, it's not going to be a one-week one thing. We're going to enforce to the fullest throughout the year. Thank you for thank, talking thank to me.